Good morning once again from NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston as we continue to take a look at the STS-132 mission and Atlantis' upcoming flight to the International Space Station. Here to give us more details about all of the spacewalks that are planned for this flight is Lisa Shore. She is the lead spacewalk officer for STS-132. Go ahead, Lisa. Thank you, Josh. Uh, for STS-132, our uh, spacewalk plan is actually pretty simple. We have three full spacewalks uh, planned with one simple goal, and that is to install the hardware that we brought up on uh, a carrier in the shuttle payload bay under the space station. Uh, from here on out, I'm going to be referring to that carrier uh, as the pallet. Uh, the pallet has the redundant space to ground uh, antenna and boom uh, on one side, along with a platform that's going to install onto the Dexter robot. And then on the other side, uh, we have six batteries. Uh, that we're going to install into the uh, space station to replace uh, the ones on the portmost uh, solar array. Very similar to what took place almost a year ago on STS-127. Uh, the whole crew is uh, going to be involved in our EVAs. Uh, our commander, commander Ken Ham, uh, will be getting the guys suited up, ready to go out the door for each of the EVAs. Uh, our pilot, Tony Antonelli, uh, will be guiding the crew through the procedures uh, during each of the spacewalks. And then Pierce Sellers, himself a veteran spacewalker, uh, will be our lead space station uh, arm operator. Uh, and the arm is very involved in the operations of each of these EVAs. Uh, Steve Bowen, Mike Good, and Garrett Reisman, again, all veteran spacewalkers, uh, will be each be performing two of our EVAs. And uh, they'll each take the lead for one of those EVAs. As you watch the video, you'll see um, Steve will be wearing the suit with the red stripe. Mike will always wear the suit with the barber pole stripes, and Garrett will wear the uh, unmarked or white stripe suit. Uh, for EVA 1, uh, Garrett Reisman and Steve Bowen will be going out the door. Garrett will take the lead on this EVA. Uh, prior to egress uh, for this EVA, the station arm will have pulled the pallet out of the shuttle payload bay and installed it uh, onto the port side of the mobile transporter on the truss. And we can go ahead and uh, roll the video. Here you can see is uh, we're going to fly into our first work site. You can see the mobile transporter uh, just to the port side of center on the space station. We have the Dexter robot installed on the left side and the pallet over on the right. The first task that the crew will perform will be to uh, pick up a couple of portable foot restraints that were left there uh, for us by the previous mission, and then they will translate those over to the pallet. You can see the pallet there. Uh, that's the six batteries on the one side that are on the side of the pallet away from the truss. And as we come around there, you can see our space-to-ground antenna dish. And then the uh, Dexter robot platform, also known as the EOTP, the enhanced uh, ORU temporary platform uh, is there next to the dish, and then the boom is below that. Here you can see Steve installing his foot restraint onto the pallet. He'll use that to stabilize himself as they pull the boom off. And then Garrett is going to install his foot restraint uh, onto the arm. And here you can see uh, Steve pulling his foot restraint off the uh, seat of cart that we took out there. Once Garrett has the foot restraint on the arm, He's going to translate over and assist Steve with releasing the boom from the pallet. Once the boom has been released, Steve will continue to stabilize it. Garrett will go ahead and ingress the arm. Steve will rotate the uh, boom up and over what we call the goal posts on the uh, <coughs> Dexter pallet, hand the boom over to Garrett, and then Garrett will carefully maneuver the boom clear of the pallet. Once he's clear of the pallet, he's going to go ahead and reposition the boom for installation at the Z1 worksite. Steve will then pick up his foot restraint, translate back over to the port seat of cart where he'll drop it off. Uh, we'll use that later when we install the pallet onto the uh, Dexter. And then as we fly over here, you can see that one big dish antenna is the existing space to ground antenna on the station. And we are going to install the redundant system uh, just starboard of it, 
um, whereas that first antenna slopes off to the side. Ours uh, will become a new 14-foot tall straight up structure right uh, next to it in the center of the space station. So Garrett, you'll see here, is about to do these big, uh, what we call windshield <coughs> wiper maneuvers over to the Z1. Uh, once he's over at the work site, uh, Steve will have translated over there. They'll work together uh, to position the boom. And you can see here, working in the uh, neutral buoyancy lab to practice that. Steve will then go ahead and drive the bolts. There's two bolts that hold the boom onto the Z1. And then Garrett will go ahead and fly back uh, to pick up the dish. While he's gone, Steve is going to connect a couple of electrical connectors to an interface panel. He'll then grab uh, four other electrical connectors that were pre-positioned for us uh, on some previous flights, connect those to the boom. And once that is complete, uh, if he still has time, he'll translate up the boom and remove the thermal cover from the transmit receive box that's in the center of the boom there. Okay, in the meantime, we have Garrett, as I said, going to pick up the dish. Uh, he'll work with peers uh, to guide himself in. There's two bolts that hold that dish into its uh, support equipment on the pallet. He'll drive each of those bolts and then uh, very carefully start to lift the dish out of that support equipment. It's a little bit of a tight space here, so uh, They'll work together, just get clear of the pallet, then do a little maneuver out from underneath the uh, boom of the arm, and then again the big windshield wiper maneuver back over to the Z1. When Garrett arrives at the Z1, Steve should be waiting for him at the top of the boom. They're going to, again, work together to very gently bring those two interfaces together. There's some very sensitive uh, areas up the top there where the actual signal passes through from the antenna down into the uh, the boom box, that we call it. And they'll get, go ahead, work together, drive four bolts to hold the dish onto the boom. Once the dish is bolted on, there's uh, two electrical connectors that need to get um, connected. And then uh, just before Garrett leaves, they'll go ahead and work together to install a thermal shield around the base of the antenna. You can see that's what white section that just went on there. As soon as that is complete, we'll send Garrett uh, back out over to the pallet to start the retrieval of the uh, Dexter platform. Steve will then uh, proceed to remove two launch locks, gimbal locks we call them, uh, on the antenna, those immobilize the antenna during its uh, launch to orbit. And once he is finished with those gimbal locks, he'll go ahead uh, clean up that Z1 work site, uh, drop a bag off at the airlock, and then meet Garrett uh, back over at the Dexter for the installation of the platform. Here you can see Garrett. Uh, once he gets back over to the pallet, he's uh, driving uh, one of the four bolts here that hold the uh, platform to its support equipment. And once that platform is released, he'll again go ahead and uh, pull that away from the pallet, and then again, another big sweeping maneuver just from one side of the mobile transporter over to the other side. This is kind of like uh, going around the block to get to your next door neighbor's house. Um, so then once uh, Garrett's over there with the pallet, uh, he and Steve will work together to insert four fasteners that hold the pallet onto the Dexter. There's also a uh, hinge pin. This platform can be rotated up. Um, during future operations for, um, into a, what we call a maintenance position. Uh, once Garrett and Steve are complete with the fasteners, Garrett will egress the arm and then send that away to a position that he can later uh, take the foot restraint off of it and clean it up. And if we have time at this point, Garrett's going to go ahead and install a, what we call a maintenance tether, basically uh, fits under a flap there uh, on the platform that's just to be used again for later operations if we ever need to rotate that platform up into the maintenance position. He also has to uh, can connect the electrical connector, uh, install a couple of fuses, and then again, time permitting, he will install the in 
put drive into the back side of the, uh, the Dexter. And what that input drive allows them to do is either for the Dexter itself or for an EV crew to actually rotate that pallet uh, 180 degrees in either direction, depending on uh, what piece of equipment you would like to temporarily stow there. Uh, while all that is taking place, Steve will have translated back over to the pallet to perform some get ahead tasks for us. Uh, we're going to have him break torque on the uh, batteries that are on the pallet. So for each of the six batteries, he'll be uh, opening up the uh, thermal cover and then using a ratchet wrench uh, to release the torque just by uh, putting one turn on each of those bolts and then he'll uh, torque it back down by hand. And that's so that uh, we can easily use our, our power tool during EVAs two and three to remove the batteries uh, from the pallet. And you can see here Steve practicing that again in the pool. Uh, once he's broken torque on um, as many of the batteries as we can get through, we'd like to get through all six, um, but it's not required. He'll go ahead and uh, close the thermal cover back up. And uh, that will be the completion of EVA 1. We'll bring our bags back inside and uh, ingress the airlock. Okay, um, for EVA 2, we'll have uh, Steve Bowen and Mike Good going out the door. Uh, Steve will take the lead on this EVA. Uh, prior to egress on this EVA, the mobile transporter will have moved down to its portmost location uh, on the truss just prior to the solar array rotary joint. Uh, Garrett and uh, Piers will then work together to pull the pallet uh, off of the uh, mobile transporter and extend it all the way out to the P6 segment uh, for the start of the EVA. And we can go ahead and roll the video. So here you see we're coming into our, our work site uh, at the far port end of the truss. Our first task on this EVA is going to be to move uh, a couple of portable foot restraints and some gap spanner chains that have been out there since uh, STS-127 back uh, last July. Uh, when they did the very similar task of r and uh, those batteries. So Steve Bowen will grab each of those foot restraints, bring them over to the uh, opposite side of the truss we'll be, where we'll be doing our battery uh, remove and replace, and grab those foot restraints, grab that gap spanner chain, install it on the other side. And while Steve is doing that, uh, Mike will go around and break torque uh, on each of the six truss batteries, again with a ratchet wrench, similar to what Steve did on the pallet for during EVA 1. Uh, once they're complete with all of those prep activities, uh, the first thing we need to do, this whole battery in r and is like a uh, shell game, or one of those puzzles where you, you move the numbers around. The first thing you need to do is create an open spot uh, to start your shuffle. So we'll install some handling aids onto the battery first the battery that we intend to remove. And then we're also going to install a, uh, we call a ball stack. It's a uh, tether, metal tether that can be rigidized to temporarily stow the battery um, during the EVAs. So there you see Mike putting that ball stack in place. Once that's complete, uh, Mike will go ahead and ingress the foot restraint. We call, we call Mike the truss guy and Steve will be the pallet guy because Mike takes all the batteries out of the truss and replaces them and Steve will take the batteries out of the pallet and replace them. So here you can see they're working together. Mike's pulled the battery out of the truss and then they pass it down to the temp stow location. We'll install it onto that uh, ball stack and then tuck it under the truss there to keep it out of the way during the robotics operations. And then Mike will reposition his foot restraint uh, for the installation of the battery. At this point, Steve will guide the pallet that uh, Piers is uh, operating the arm there, guide the pallet in for the removal of the first battery. You know, battery and the pallet gets close enough, he'll go ahead and open the thermal cover, install a couple more handling aids pull that battery out, 
Here you can see them practicing that again in the pool. Training for this was challenging because since we couldn't put the pallet on the arm in the pool, we had to actually put the crew member on the arm and uh, sort of do things backwards. So there's Steve pulling the battery out of the pallet as he'll do on EVA2. Once the battery's been removed, uh, they'll work together to what we call shepherd the battery down to its install location. That's just basically a hand handoff uh, from one crew member to the next, kind of inchworm it down the truss, and then um, install it back into the truss. These batteries are about uh, three and a half feet by three and a half feet each, uh, weigh about 365 pounds. So you can imagine uh, there when Steve is holding the battery now, installing it uh, back into the pallet, he can't see a whole lot more than battery. Uh, so it's really important for our, our other crew member, Mike in this case, uh, to help guide uh, the battery into the slot without uh, hitting any of the other equipment. In between the first and second battery on the pallet there, we need to uh, reposition our foot restraint and then reposition the pallet. That's to keep that bottom keel pin on the pallet from getting too close to the truss. Uh, once that's complete, we go ahead and guide the pallet back in, again, remove the battery, and then once more uh, shepherd it over to its install location on the truss. And then uh, one more time here, we'll move our foot restraint, remove the third battery from the truss, shepherd it back over to the pallet, and then uh, Mike, or I'm sorry, uh, Steve will install that battery uh, back into the pallet. Okay, one more time, we'll guide the pallet uh, up to the next battery. So here you can see the thermal cover closing on the second battery, guide the pallet down, install the handling aids, and then again, remove the battery from the pallet and shepherd it back over to the truss to install it. So at this point, we have three new batteries installed in the truss and two of the old batteries put back on the pallet for return to earth. At the very end there, the crew will retrieve that temp stowed battery and uh, put it back into the pallet, close up the MLI, and the arm will then maneuver away to a clearance position uh, where it will back out of the way so we continue to rotate the solar arrays uh, in between EVAs two and three. When that's complete, the crew's going to go ahead and uh, do a couple of get-aheads for the next EVA. They'll reposition that ball stack uh, at a different temp stow location. They'll take the foot restraint, move it up to the location that Garrett will use it to remove the first battery from the truss on EVA3. And then we have a couple of tool bags that we took out uh, on this EVA, and we're actually going to leave those uh, stowed outside in between, so they'll stow those uh, on the truss also. And then we're coming back inside. Okay, uh, for the third EVA, um, goal is to uh, finish the r and of the remaining batteries on the pallet. Uh, Mike Good and Garrett Reisman will be going out for this uh, third EVA uh, with Mike taking the lead. Uh, we're gonna start this EVA in the same arm and pallet configuration uh, that we did on the last EVA. We'll go ahead and roll the video. So again, coming into the uh, same work site, uh, not as much preparation is required on EVA2 since everything's uh, set up for us. So here you can see uh, Garrett is hanging upside down there from his foot restraint in what we call the Batman position to remove that first battery from the truss. He'll hand it down to Mike. They temp stow it down there at the bottom. And then they will translate over to the pallet Again, guide it in and start the uh, removal process uh, over again. So here we have Mike this time is our pallet guy pulling the battery out of the pallet. <clears throat> and then the crew will again shepherd it down to the install location on the truss. reposition the foot restraint, and then 
Garrett will ingress the foot restraint, remove the fifth battery from the truss, again, shepherd it back over to the pallet, install it for the return to earth. And here you can see Garrett uh, practicing at the, uh, in the pool to install that battery. Uh, once that battery is complete, again, guide the pallet down to the position to remove the fifth battery from the, the pallet. I'll go ahead and pull that battery out. As you can see, they, it's a very slow and meticulous process. The back side of those batteries has uh, cooling fins on it, so the crew has to be very careful uh, not to nick or ding uh, the sides of the battery. Again, the pallet backs away. Crew will shepherd the battery down to the install location. Here you can see Garrett installing the battery into the truss and then Mike, again, helping him guide it in there uh, so that it doesn't uh, hit any of the sidewalls of the truss there. Like I said, Garrett can't see much other than battery at this point. Once we're done with the fifth battery, we'll rotate our foot restraint over to a position that Garrett can pull the sixth battery out of the truss. Again, shepherd that back up to the pallet. Install it. Remove the handling aids, close the thermal cover, and then again, guide the pallet uh, up to the position that he can pull the uh, sixth and final battery off the pallet for installation into the truss. We expect these batteries to take somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 to an hour uh, for each pair of one from each, uh, one from the pallet, one from the truss. Again, when that six batteries out of the pallet, uh, Garrett will go ahead and install that into the truss. The crew will then retrieve the uh, temp stowed battery, shepherd that back over to the pallet, install it, uh, remove the handling aids for the final time, close up the uh, thermal cover, and then they'll make sure that uh, everything's tucked away uh, for the pallet's return in the shuttle bay. And that's basically just closing some quarter turn fasteners, making sure all the, the coverings are down. And then again, the arm will move off to a clearance position uh, where it will later be uh, relocated down the truss so that it can be put back in the, the payload bay. At this point, the crew is going to uh, gather up those gap spanner chains that they installed back at the beginning of EVA2. We're gonna grab one of the foot restraints that we have out there. We are leaving one out for use uh, on a later shuttle mission. And we will take the uh, foot restraint, the gap spanner chains, and then the two tool bags that we also had uh, taken out there on EVA2, bring everything uh, back inboard. We're going to drop the foot restraint off on the uh, port seat of cart. That's one of the carts uh, attached there to the mobile transporter. And at this point, um, if there is time remaining uh, in the EVA, we'll go ahead and translate uh, down to the shuttle. We have a um, grapple fixture that we flew up on the uh, port side of the shuttle payload bay. So the crew will translate down on their way, um, grab a handling aid, uh, that they can install onto the face of that uh, grapple fixture. Once they have the handling aid um, installed, you can see here in the video, that's what they're doing right now is putting that handling aid on. Uh, once that is installed, they'll work together to remove four fasteners. Uh, here they are driving uh, those fasteners to release them. Uh, remove the four fasteners that hold the grapple fixture to the payload bay wall. Um, pull it off, and then uh, we'll actually use that handling aid, allows us to uh, stow that grapple fixture onto uh, Mike Good's body restraint tether on the left side of his spacesuit. Uh, they'll then 
start the uh, long translation from the shuttle payload bay back over to the airlock. And we're actually gonna take that grapple fixture back inside uh, where it will be integrated onto some uh, Russian hardware. And the plan is to take uh, that full assembly with the grapple fixture and the Russian hardware back out later on a stage EVA uh, for, uh, installation uh, onto the FGB. So it would give us a new arm base on the FGB. And when that is complete, the crew is going to go, go ahead and come back inside from EVA 3. Uh, that go ahead and uh, concludes the summary of the EVA. So if there's any questions now, I can go ahead and take those. Okay, we'll start off with questions here at the Johnson Space Center, then we'll go around to the other NASA centers. Nothing here. Anybody? Sure. Okay. Um, moving to <clears throat> big batteries, when you all have done stuff like this before, is there anything in your mind especially challenging about any of these tasks? If, be it either the, the escant you know, clearance issue and making sure you get it out without dinging something or just moving these masses around? Yeah, uh, the challenge, I mean, especially with the escant, is that the, uh, well, well, one, like for the boom, I mean, like I said, it's eight foot long. So, I mean, it's just a very large mass. It's not very heavy. Um, but the crew just needs to be careful as they, you know, translate it around. And we especially want to make sure we don't um, hit any of the other hardware on the pallet. So that's why it's very important that Steve helps Garrett uh, lift that boom up over the goal posts uh, on the Dexter platform. And then when we uh, translate the dish itself, that dish is very fragile. That's a graphite uh, composite dish. Um, so you can see there um, on the video, it's a very tight clearance uh, when Garrett goes ahead and pulls that out. So he just needs to be very careful. And then again, um, when they go to install the dish onto the boom, uh, we've been told by the engineers uh, that own that hardware that that's a very, very sensitive interface and any scratches could uh, degrade the signal. So we need to be careful with that. Um, as far as the batteries, um, like I said, they are big and kind of unwieldy. You can't see a, you know, a lot when you're uh, actually holding the battery. But one of the biggest challenges on that, you can see it's a very repetitive process. You know, so the crew, um, you know, they've trained a lot, but they need to really keep their head in the game you know, to not get uh, complacent and uh, make sure they always remember where they are. And uh, Tony Antonelli, our IV, is, is very, very good at uh, keeping everybody you know, in the game and making sure that we're you know, doing what we're supposed to do. And one more for me, um, <clears throat> given that you've got three guys doing two each and everybody's a lead on one, is there a reason for that or is that just just to spread it, spread it around a little bit? I'm, I wasn't sure about the reason for um, it. It was really just to spread it around a little bit. I mean, it's rare that you have three veteran spacewalkers on one mission. Um, so they each bring something different to the table. You know, Steve has done the assembly missions before. Uh, Mike has done the Hubble missions, and Garrett actually lived on board space station. So they each bring something different. So uh, we only thought it was fair that they each get to take the lead on an EVA. Okay, that's it from here. Let's go down to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and take some questions from there. Um, Marcia Dunn, Associated Press. Um, for the battery work, uh, some of that prep work I know was taken off the last flight due to some safety concerns, and I'm wondering what changes were made to make it safe for the upcoming spacewalks? That's a very good question. Um, yes, the, uh, originally the relocation of the portable foot restraints in the gap spanners, uh, along with the breaking of the torque on the six batteries on the truss, uh, was to take place by the, uh, the last shuttle flight, um, uh, 19A. Um, the reason they decided not to do that was because of uh, an uncertainty uh, with an electrical shock hazard that we had. And so uh, we are flying up uh, new mini workstations, which is the uh, piece of hardware that the crew wears on the, the front of the spacesuits that holds the tools uh, for them. Uh, those new base plates uh, are electrically isolated from the suits, and uh, that will reduce the, uh, the hazard back into an acceptable range when our crew performs the, uh, that activity. Will they be taking any other precautions aside from that to further reduce the risk, or is, is that enough in terms of the um, safety concerns? Um, we, had, we had other um, mitigation, uh, mitigation steps in place, and basically that's to always make sure that their, their wrist rings are covered by their gauntlets. Um, other than that, we, we don't have any other uh, steps that we put in place. 
And, and lastly, for the last question from here, how many, um, how, what is the distance between that work site on the far port side and the airlock in terms of the distance traveled by the crew, not you know as the bird fly, so to speak, but from hand over hand crawling? How, how many feet is that? Do you know offhand? Um, I don't, let me see. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly offhand, but I know we're um, almost towards the end of our tethers. We're using an 85 foot safety tether to get out um, to an anchor point where we're, we're dropping uh, the anchors of those tethers off and then we uh, go another 85 feet from there. So what's that, 170 feet. And then we have a 55 foot tether connected to our 85 foot tethers. So that would be someplace in the neighborhood of 220 feet that the crew is translating. If I did my math right. Okay, I think that's it from the Kennedy Space Center. Let's go up to NASA headquarters in uh, Washington. Thank you, it's uh, Tarek Malik from uh, space.com. And uh, you know, it seemed, you mentioned the, the repetitive nature of the battery work and, and that it's gonna take a couple of spacewalks to, um, uh, to complete. I'm just wondering how, um, how you do keep them uh, focused on what, it, what looks to be a pretty tedious uh, task at the end of the space station. And um, I guess how many runs that they do each of the spacewalkers perform uh, to rehearse those, those uh, actions, thanks. Uh, good question. Uh, we actually, as far as timeline runs for the batteries, uh, we did six uh, runs in the water. There was actually an, another few uh, runs that we did just for development to make sure we, uh, we had a good technique for training the batteries in the pool. Um, as far as keeping the crew on game, I mean, when you're holding a big 365 pound battery, I think they're, they're very aware um, how important it is um, to stay with it, but like I said, our, our IV, Tony Antonelli, um, he really, you know, um, keeps the crews, the crew talking. He makes sure, makes sure that, uh, you know, that, that uh, the guy on the pallet is communicating clearly to peers um, operating it from the arm. So um, we haven't, you know, obviously we haven't gone off and, and executed this, but I, I don't think the crew's gonna have any problems uh, keeping their head in the game. I think that's it from headquarters. Let's come back here for some follow-ups right here. Yeah, I just have a quick one. Uh, Mark Kirkman, Interspace News. Um, can you tell me uh, wh where you stand on EVA training at this point? Are any more NBL runs, uh, VR lab runs, or SIMs left? No, nope. at, at this point training we've complete. completed all of the NBL runs, and um, it's a good point. We did, because this was so hard to train in the pool, we pretty much coupled every uh, pool run with a, a run in the virtual reality lab. So. Um, but at this point, everything is complete. The crew's uh, fully trained and ready to go. Okay, Bill. Yeah, um, just one more follow up on Marsh's question about the shock hazard. I was never clear when they told us about this last time. Was this an issue that you, your suit takes a charge and you have a malfunction or does this kill somebody? I mean, I, I never really understood the real nature of the threat. Um, I'm probably not the best person to answer that, but my, my understanding is it's not something that's going to kill somebody, but that it could cause you to um, involuntarily move, um, maybe cause somebody to drop a battery, um, lose their grip on the truss, something like that. Okay, is that it from here? All right, we'll wrap up today's briefing. Coming up next here on NASA Television, we'll have the B-roll uh, video file that you'll see all the animations and some of the video uh, that you've been seeing during today's briefings. Our next briefing from here at JSC will take place at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. The entire STS-132 crew will be here to answer questions about their upcoming flight. As always, for the latest information, you can always log on to our website at www.nasa.gov. Thanks a lot for joining us.